right now on the National Weather Desk. Here we go again. More rain is headed to soggy California, where a series of storms have already left their mark. I think the flooding we're going to see is going to reach disaster proportions. And it's not just the rain. Powerful winds took down trees and power lines. Honest to God, I saw the tree coming right at me. It was definitely scary. We'll help you better understand the Pineapple Express. The name Pineapple comes from the spot where the moisture originates, near Hawaii. And have you ever wondered why it sounds so quiet after it snows? There's actually a physical reason. Plus the dangers of backcountry activities in the Rocky Mountains and what caused all this sea foam to form along the California coast. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. And a very good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk. I'm meteorologist Brian Vandegraaff. Well, Californians may be dreaming of rainfall to help end their drought, but instead many are experiencing a nightmare of floods, toppled trees, and power outages. And the threat continues. Most of the state from south of Los Angeles to the Oregon border is under an excessive rainfall risk today. That large area of red you see there means it's a moderate risk that some potential flooding could happen. And get this, another storm is expected to arrive midweek. The whole area will be pummeled multiple times throughout this next couple of days. Now remember this scene from last week. It's the massive waves and flooding near Santa Cruz. More rain increases the threat that a scene like this could be repeated today. Cornell Barnard has more on the flooding concerns in Sonoma County. Check out new video of a waterlogged Russian River Valley shot from Sonoma 1, the county fire district's chopper. Saturday's reconnaissance mission showed swollen creeks and lagoons, which normally take overflow from the Russian River, now reaching the top of their banks. I think the flooding we're going to see is going to reach disaster proportions as far as it getting into businesses and residences and cutting off access roads. Many folks in Guerneville have been getting ready this week for flooding and possible evacuations, stacking sandbags around shops and homes. Um, right now we don't have power. Uh, we haven't had power since Wednesday afternoon. Daniel Falcon Schneider lives in Casadero, where toppled trees are everywhere. What does Cas Highway look like Thursday morning? Like a tornado went through. You couldn't see the asphalt. It was just branches and... He worries flood water from the river could leave him stranded. Firefighters urge folks living near creeks and rivers to be ready to leave their homes if water starts to rise. Just have a plan B in a go bag pack. Where are you going to go? How are you going to connect with your family? And how will you communicate or deal with the situation, especially if it's at night and if you lose power? In Sacramento, people are keeping a very close eye on the Sacramento River. It could approach flood stage. Now, with today's rainfall, this is forecast to reach about 32 feet or just over 32 feet. Flood stage is 33 and a half feet. So that's a concern for people living near or even on the river on boats. There are also plenty of tree branches in the river right now, making things even more hazardous. Those powerful winds brought down power lines all over the Sacramento region. Many were lying across the street. Others fell on homes and cars. And as of this morning, the more than 110,000 customers across California are without power. 40,000 of those right now in Sacramento County. The mess left some people in the community in shock. The windows were moving in and out. And I got everything ready because I knew we were going to lose power. Um, and then I came outside and it was like a, a hurricane. It, stuff was flying around in the air. It, it just, it was definitely scary. Those same winds also took down massive trees, which then landed on homes like this one. Liz Amitri has more on that story. All the noise at night kept people up. The wind was just howling, just whipping. It was around midnight when Jan Ponticelli saw firsthand how powerful that wind was. My bedroom's on the top floor and I could hear bump, but I kept hearing like something hitting the house. And when I got up to look out this bank of windows, um, honest to God, I saw the tree coming right at me. It fell onto the rooftop right above her bedroom at her East Sacramento home, but she was okay. We're going to be okay. I'm sure I'm one of many, many people. And she was right. This tree toppled over doing some damage at 21st and F Street. At 43rd between H and J Streets, a tall tree ripped up part of the sidewalk and landed on top of the house across the street. Then trees and power lines were down at 8th and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, where utility crews were out there trying to get that electricity back up and running. And at 42nd and F Streets, 
The cleanup began after yet another tree uprooted and balanced onto power lines and one near that peeled out of the ground and onto a home. Just about everyone seems to have a story to tell after a sleepless night sparked by dangerous damaging winds. Now you probably heard some of the new terms blowing in the wind ahead of the storm and during some of those storms that have been slamming the California coast. Atmospheric river though might be one of them. Meteorologist Emily Gracie explains another one that's been around for quite some time. You've probably heard the term atmospheric river, but have you heard about the Pineapple Express? Sounds tasty, right? Not so much. In fact, it's a type of atmospheric river that can cause extensive damage once it reaches the west coast of the United States. The name pineapple comes from the spot where the moisture originates, near Hawaii. As the jet stream dips south in the winter, these juicy storms hitch a ride from the tropics to California, where they can dump dangerous amounts of rain and snow. They even get categorized on a scale of one to five, like hurricanes. So next time you hear the term Pineapple Express, remember, before it was a Seth Rogen movie, it was a destruction and sometimes beneficial source of moisture. For the National Weather Desk, I'm meteorologist Emily Gracie. Rain in California is not all bad news and many are actually hopeful it'll help bring the state out of its historic drought that's head now over to Redding, California, where Mason Carroll spoke with ranchers in the area to find out what all this rain will mean for them. We need more rain and when we get that done, uh, We'll be back on board, but we aren't going to be through it. This is what rancher Jim Rickert said this summer. They, along with many other North State ranchers, are feeling the effects of the drought. So with the increased rain and winter storm, I want to check back in with Rickert to see what this new precipitation means to them. It's a bit of a miracle. Uh, the truth is we're, we're getting uh, uh, just a, a great rain and who knows what this is going to what's going to happen here. Rickert, who had to sell off some of his herd this summer, said the new rain will help water and feed the cattle. But like we saw last year, California weather can be unpredictable, which makes it even harder for farmers and ranchers. It, it's uh, it's really difficult to to plan around that. You know, you have droughts and you have floods and you have all the things in between. So you try to you, you work at managing around that, but it's uh, it's a real project. Both Rickard and state officials say this does not mean the drought is over just yet. The Department of Water Resources put out a statement saying we're in the middle of a flood emergency and also in the middle of a drought emergency. This is an extreme weather event and we're moving from extreme drought to extreme flood. Rickard says the best outcome would be more warm rain spread out across multiple weeks. But he and other ranchers and farmers will continue to persevere rain or shine. Sometimes it's a it's a struggle and a thankless job, but if you can see animals and plants growing and things like that, it, th there's a lot of reward in that just, to, just seeing that happen. In Colorado, two snowmobilers are dead following an avalanche on Saturday. It happened near Winter Park, which is about 70 miles west of Denver. Officials say the men who are in their 50s are the third and fourth people to die in a Colorado avalanche since Christmas. The deaths highlight the dangers of backcountry activities where avalanches are more likely to occur. And much better ending here in Utah where two men who were backcountry skiing needed to be rescued. One of them was injured. It happened in Big Cottonwood Canyon near the Solitude Ski Resort. The skiers were trapped in snow up to their waist. Rescue crews say the time of the accident did help with their efforts. When his wreck occurred, it was around noon, so we do have plenty of daylight. If this happens later on in the, the day, it makes our job a lot more complicated to get him out. Crews were able to land a helicopter, load the injured skier, and then fly him to a hospital for treatment. And the drone, here's a new drone video from Trent Palmer taken last week. Fog settled under the Ravenel Bridge in Charleston, South Carolina due to a temperature inversion. Unusually air, warm air near the ground is warmer than that aloft allowing air to circulate. But when the air at the surface is stable and cool with the warm air above, fog can form and get trapped. And if you have clear skies this weekend, you may have caught a glimpse of the full moon known as the full wolf moon. Chelsea Henley Renwick saw this moon and framed it perfectly with a crane on Surfside Pier in South Carolina. Equally well framed is this shot of the moon directly behind the radar tower at WHAM-TV in Rochester, New York. The next full moon is the snow moon back on February 